Okay, it is, uh, yeah, it's ninth week Friday. Uh, we have a final exam scheduled for one week from today, which is, uh, it's like snuck up on me also. Um, so I'm not, I haven't written the, uh, the final exam yet, so I can't tell you um, exactly uh, how to prepare for it yet, okay? So I'll probably work on it this weekend, and then so by Monday, I can uh, give you at least uh, a better idea of what to expect. And so I'm sorry, um, it's not, uh, I'm not ready to tell you just yet, okay? Um, so, so I'll tell you about the, uh, the final on Monday. Uh, I know I haven't released um, homework six yet either. Um, so uh, also working on that. And, um, and I'll, I'll make sure you guys have enough time to, uh, to complete homework six as well. Um, I thought what we could do today was start to look at a, uh, an application of Gibbs sampling, okay? Kind of like we, um, so just kind of a, an interesting, or I, at least what I think is an interesting application of the, uh, the Gibbs sampler uh, in kind of the similar way that um, we saw the uh, uh, deciphering algorithm using the Metropolis algorithm, uh, I think, um, we can do something um, uh, just kind of a, an application using uh, Gibbs sampling. So I don't know, did you guys have fun with the uh, the deciphering thing in your homework or was it not, um, not the, I don't know. I thought it was kind of neat. It, it, it's uh, anyway, I thought it was a neat thing. Okay, so, um, uh, so anyway, the, uh, the application, um, for the Gibbs sampler that, uh, that I want to look at is called, um, is that we're going to look at a document clustering application, okay? And so, um, um, deciphering was fun for the qu quotes that you knew? Okay, yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I like, uh, I like those series of books, <laughs> so, um, Um, and, and I also just like that quote about the dolphins too, so. <laughs> uh, I guess, I guess it's also like, in, in some way, maybe it also just reflects um, uh, a, a little bit like, um, because sometimes people ask me if I if I have a desire to pursue like a tenure track teaching position or if I want to go into industry or things like that. And I'm just I'm totally happy where I am <laughs> right now in life, and uh, and I don't have any further ambitions for for anything um, in greater. So I just I feel like yeah you know at this point I can be a dolphin just playing around in the sea because I I don't, I don't know I just have fun doing this. Okay. So anyway, um, we're going to look at document clustering. Like it's a, and I get paid for this job. <laughs> it's so great. Um, so this is a, this is an unsupervised learning problem. Okay, document, document clustering. And, and the idea here is that we've got, we've got a bunch of these documents, right? We have, uh, um, we have a bunch of documents. And when we talk about a document, okay, um, a document is just text. Okay, so you can have short documents like tweets. So like Twitter or, um, you know, you can have longer documents such as book, um, newspaper articles or book chapters, things like that. And, uh, 
And what our algorithm is going to do, the algorithm is going to, quote, read the documents. And it's a clustering algorithm, so it's going to try to group similar documents together. Um, there's no predefined clusters. All right, the, uh, the algorithm has to kind of discover the clusters on its own. And, um, but we do, what we do need to do is we do need to specify how many clusters to search for. Okay, this is, um, Document clustering is generally considered a harder problem than document classification. So in document um, classification, which is a supervised learning problem. Okay, so um, um, in document classification, you have training data and the training data is labeled with classes and then the problem is you get a new document, like a test document, and you try to classify this new document by com basically comparing it to um, your training data. Okay, supervised learning. Um, so training data is, has um, classes labeled. Okay, and then, um, you know, we want to classify, you know, um, a new test document. Okay, so I have to give credit to uh, an article which I will share with you guys. Give sampling for the un uninitiated. And that's, uh, that's where this um, example comes from. All right. Okay, so we're going to just start off with a, a simple example where we're only going to just search for kind of two clusters in the documents. Okay, all we have is... Uh, we will search for two clusters in the documents. Okay, and so just some notation. Okay, so first we've got big C, okay? And this is our corpus. This is going to be all the documents we have. Okay. 
and, uh, and we're going to divide the corpus into C sub zero. Okay, and these will be all documents labeled class zero. Label zero. And there are C zero is the kind of count of documents labeled zero. It's a little c. And then on the other side, we've got C1, which will be all documents labeled one. And C1 will be the count of documents. Labeled one. Okay. Um, all right, so that's just a, a bit of notation. And as far as recording the documents, we're going to record the documents using the uh, bag of words model. Okay, and uh, and so the bag of words model is the idea that you know just imagine you've got some article printed out on a piece of paper, and you cut every word out, uh, and you drop the words into a bag. Okay, and then the contents of the bag is your representation of the document. All right, so imagine the article printed on paper. Okay, you cut out each word. And put it in a bag, put them in a bag. Okay. So you can imagine you get these these words on some kind of document, right. And what we're going to do is we cut each word out. Using. Okay. And then so these, these pieces may just go into some kind of bag here. And this is a um, basically our representation. of the document. Okay, and so because everything just gets kind of thrown into a bag, the order of the words don't matter. And documents are just treated as a list of words and their frequencies. Okay, so um, the order of words do not matter. Okay, documents Documents are treated as a list of words and, uh, and frequencies. Okay, so, you know, here's, you know, a shortcoming of this model is that, you know, the, the following two documents Um, have different meanings, but we'll get the same representation. Or 
have different meanings. Um, but have the same representation, okay? So someone writes, you know, I am not upset, I am happy. And someone else writes, I am not happy, I am upset. Okay, All right, hashtag election or hashtag show ending, right? Series, series finale, okay? Um, <laughs> Game of Thrones finale. Um, so anyway, this is, um, these two tweets have very different meanings, okay? But as far as the word of bag of words model goes, the bag of words model, this will say, um, so, we would say am to in alphabetical order h i okay am happy one i two not one and upset one right this is this is uh, the document representation okay Okay, so this is how the document gets represented in the bag of words model, and and both of these would have the uh, the same representation, right? Uh, I'm sorry, not wait, I, yeah, I am not upset, I am happy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I shows up twice, am shows up twice, happy shows up once, not shows up once, and upset shows up once, type of thing. Okay. Um. So so anyway, the bag of words work model works best if there's kind of a strong link between words and, and subjects or topics. words and subjects or topics. So, you know, for example, there's a strong, I would say, I would argue that there's a strong link between the word Bayesian and the topic statistics, right? Because if you, if you overhear somebody else's conversation and you hear the word Bayesian, I think immediately you're, well, I don't know, me, <laughs> my ears would perk up and I'd be like, oh, are you talking about statistics or data science or something? Because, you know, I just can't imagine too many other contexts where someone's going to use the word Bayesian, right? Um, or as, you know, the word run, the word run can be applied to kind of any kind of context, right? Run could be talking about like uh, going exercise and uh, doing exercise and running or uh, playing baseball and scoring a point. Yeah, every point is considered is a run in baseball. Or it could just be like, I need, I'm trying to do some programming and I can't get my computer program to run type of thing, right? So, so run doesn't have a very strong link between um, itself and another, uh, and a topic. Whereas, you know, Bayesian almost always going to be kind of used in the context of statistics and probability and machine learning and data science type of things. So, um, something like that, okay? So, um, so we have that, okay. Um, so that's the bag of words model. Is this okay? Um, how, how this start? Let me give you, um, I haven't given you any quiz answers yet, right? Okay, so first one, first one today is E. E as an elephant, E. E is the first quiz answer. Okay, and um, all right, so let me um, have a very, very simplified document creation model.
So this is not how documents get created, but, um, but it's a simplified representation, okay? Document creation model, right? So we have documents of two possible um, cl classes. All right, so we start off with a Bernoulli trial, okay? And the Bernoulli trial has parameter pi, okay? And so pi is the probability of basically of one, okay? Or zero. <laughs> um, and Okay, so if uh, if class equals zero, then um, we have a word probability lexicon. Associated with class zero. Okay, so if you recall the deciphering um, algorithm, one of the things that we loaded up was this uh, word probability lexicon. And in that word probability lexicon, it said, you know, the word the shows up with this probability. The word uh, happy shows up with this probability. The word house shows up with this probability, okay? And, you know, there were thousands of words and, uh, and a whole bunch of corresponding probabilities. Okay, and so that's the um, word probability uh, lexicon. Uh, and basically, we're gonna have, depending on the class, we might have, we're gonna have different word probability lexicons. Okay, so if class equals one, we have a different word probability lexicon. Okay, so I don't know, just silly example. Class zero, maybe the subject is fruit. In class one, the subject is sports. Okay, and so here are for, we might have the word apple and banana, and maybe uh, apple will say shows up with probability 0 0.015 and banana shows up with probability 0 0.018, okay? Um, but then, you know, maybe we'll have other words like ball and a goal or something like that, okay? And so for in this thing, this might show up with very low probability, okay? Something like that. Whereas over here, the word apple probably shows up with, you know, low probability banana will also show up with some low probability, whereas ball is, you know, probably higher, um, higher probability goal, higher probability or something like that, right? So we've got different word lexicons, okay? So this would kind of, and then you, you know, obviously more words in your lexicon. So this is the uh, lexicon for uh, class one. And this is the lexicon for class zero. And then from here, we would use the multinomial distribution to generate a bag of words.
Okay. And so the uh, the multinomial distribution is like the uh, multi uh, multiple category uh, generalization of the binomial distribution. Okay. So the binomial distribution. You know, you have parameters n trials, and um, each trial has probability theta of success. Okay. All right. And so um, maybe if you have um, a binomial distribution. with n equal to 10 and p equal to 0 0.5, okay? Uh, a random draw could be say six. Okay, and basically it kind of answers the question, how, how many times Will a fair coin land heads if we flip it 10 times? All right. Um, so that's, that's the binomial. And then if you flip it 10 times, maybe you get six, maybe you get five, maybe you get four, maybe you get three, who knows, okay? Um, the conjugate prior to the binomial is the beta distribution prior for uh, theta in the binomial. The beta, distribution. the beta distribution produces a value between zero and one that can be used for theta. Um, okay, so this, um, the multinomial distribution is um, kind of a generalization of this, but it allows for more than just two categories. Okay, so binomial, there's only two categories, success, um, or failure. Okay, the multinomial generalizes to more than two categories. Okay, so here we have n trials. Okay, and now we have um, a vector theta, okay, a vector theta of length k, of length k, um, and it's of probabilities for each class, for probabilities, uh, um, I guess, of the possible classes. All right, so you're going to have, you know, theta is equal to some vector, theta 1, theta 2, through theta k. And what's required is that the sum of your 
thetas from i equal to one to k is that the sum of the thetas have to be one, okay? And so this would be kind of like, um, All right, so you've got this wheel, okay? And you've got some kind of spinner. Okay, and so, you know, I don't, maybe theta here is uh, gonna be, I, I can't even do this. Um, as if this here would be 25%, so maybe we've got 0.2, point, um, 0.18, I'm just making stuff up here, okay? And, uh, and this looks like 0.24 and 0.26, okay? I think this adds up to one if I, if I, and a, this adds up to 50 and that adds up to 50, yeah, okay. Okay, and then so you'd, it would be like, let's spin the wheel 20 times. Okay, how many times did it land on each space? Okay, and you know, maybe one possible random draw is going to be, you know, we got A, let's say um, four times, B, we got three times, C, we got three times, D, we got six times, and E, we got four times. Okay, I don't know. All right, so this is just a possible outcome of what happens when if you spin the wheel 20 times or something. Okay, so that's the uh, the multinomial distribution. It's just, it's like the binomial, except instead of two categories, you've got however many categories you need. And then the conjugate prior for the uh, for multinomial distribution is the Dirichlet distribution. Okay, uh, Dirichlet distribution. And the Dirichlet distribution will produce um, a random vector theta. Okay, a random vector theta Basically, that sums to one. Okay, that can be used for the multinomial distribution. Um, all right, so let me talk a little bit more about the, uh, the Dirichlet distribution. Um, and, uh, and I think that's about as far as I got last class, but, um, okay. So, um, so yeah, so the multinomial, um, 
you know, you've got multiple categories. And, and the idea here is that we are going to um, generate words or generate documents using a multinomial distribution where theta is kind of the um, vector, the, um, the word probability lexicon. So, you know, in this example, I've just have five categories. Okay. And, you know, we're, we're spinning it 20 times or something, but for the document generation, it's just, instead of having five possible categories, you might have like a thousand possible words, right? So you, you think of like, what's the, uh, the vocabulary that we have um, kind of in the, in the language. So, you know, in the deciphering thing, we had like 80,000 words or something. So just imagine this wheel split into like 80,000 little <laughs> um, categories, and then you're just gonna spin the wheel like a hundred times. And, uh, and when you do that, you're gonna just say, okay, um, this word showed up uh, this many times in the document, and this word showed up this many times in the document, so on and so forth. And, um, um, you know, and, and basically the idea is that what this wheel looks like is going to differ depending on the subject that we're talking about, okay? So if we're talking about sports, you know, there's a, there's a section on the wheel that represents the word ball, maybe a section on the wheel that represents the word player, section on the wheel that represents the word team. And we would expect those sections, those categories or those possibilities to have greater, to be bigger on the wheel that represents the category sports, okay? Whereas if, uh, if the category is fruit, then the, probably the, the areas on the wheel that represent ball, player, and team are gonna be smaller and words that represent um, the areas that represent words like apple and seed and banana and I don't I don't know what other words you talk about when talking about fruits but um, you know those areas on the on the wheel would be larger okay um, so that that's kind of the idea here okay uh, probably to make um, later on when, when we actually do the text processing we're also going to just throw away all of what we call stop words in English, which would be like just your basic words like the and is and are, and I don't, I don't know, just a whole bunch of these things that don't provide uh, a whole lot of meaning um, in terms of what subject we're talking about. It, they're important structures for, <laughs> to kind of piece our language together. But as far as like identifying what subject we're talking about, the word the, and is and a don't aren't aren't very useful. So we probably just end up throwing those ones out of our um, out of our wheels. Okay, so th that's kind of the uh, the idea here. And uh, and so let me just talk about the uh, the Dirichlet distribution. Okay, and um, and I think all of this kind of um, it's it's best if we first tie it back to something we I hope understand. Okay, so in the beta distribution you know, has two parameters. Alpha and beta. And the these shape parameters, alpha and beta, can be thought of as pseudo counts of su uh, success and failure, okay? Pseudo counts of success and failure. And the idea being that if, if we have, let's say alpha is equal to five and beta equals five, then I get this distribution kind of centered at 0.5, but, but very broad, right? But if I have um, alpha equal to 500 and beta equal to 500, what does my 
distribution look like, I end up having this um, much, much more narrow, much narrower distribution, okay? Where, um, where I'm much kind of more confident that it's uh, 0.5. Or, you know, if alpha is equal to say 20, beta is equal to 80, Okay. Something something closer to point two. Um, all right. So that's that's what the beta distribution looks like. The Dirichlet has a vector. alpha, okay, a vector alpha of length k of, you know, we can think of, think of these as pseudo counts for each category. All right, so let's say we have alpha equal to two comma two comma two. We can think of this as maybe we've got category one, category two, and category three, right? And category one you can think of kind of each category as being um, this almost like each category is its own, almost like beta, beta distribution here. So all, all of these should be, uh, should be identical here, okay? So that's um, if alpha were two, two, and two, okay? And you know, maybe another example is we could have alpha be something like two, six, and 12, okay? And so in this case, if we think about what category one, category two, and category three look like, okay? So um, here we would have We've got zero and we would have um, probably something centered at point one, maybe, I don't know. Okay. Um, at zero and one and uh, maybe around here. Uh, maybe I've got something centered at point three for category two. And then for category three, 12, 12. All right, something maybe closer to point six. All right, and so uh, a random draw from this Dirichlet distribution from Dirichlet 2, 6, 12 could be something like, um, you know, our vector theta is going to be um, 0 0.12, 0 0.31, 0 0.67, okay? or, you know, another random draw from this Dirichlet could be um, theta equal to say point oh nine point two eight, 
or um, wait, do these add up? No, I'm, oh, this this doesn't work out. Um, this needs to be 0.57, sorry, in order to add up to one, okay? And this would be 0.63, I think, 0 0.09, 0 0.63. Am I, am I adding correctly? <laughs> they need to add up to one. So, um, right, so 0.09 plus 0.28 plus 0 0.6. Yeah, okay, 0.12 plus 0.31 plus 0.57. Okay, so so you would get these, these vectors that add up to one. And in this case, because alpha is of length three, we, we would get a vector of length three. Now, now the idea here is that we're going to do something similar for our document generation model, except our alpha is going to be like a thousand things long because it's each each spot represents a word, right? A word in the English language, and um, and there could be you know thousands of words um, in our potential you know vo vocabulary here, and so um, so we're going to get you know. Um, uh, like a, a, a vector of length thousand of pseudo counts of like how many times we expect this word to appear and this word to appear and this word to appear. And then when we do a Dirichlet draw from that, it's going to be a vector of length thousand or whatever, how many words we have. And they're all going to be very small numbers, but when you add them all up, you get a probability of one. And then we use that um, vector theta into our in our multinomial distribution, and that's going to generate the counts for the uh, bag of words that we have. All right. Is that conceptually okay? This idea of a, a document generation here, a bag of words document generation. Okay. Well, um, we'll explore that um, some more um, next week on Monday. On Monday, we'll uh, we'll kind of look at the uh, the ideas there in uh, in terms of. Kind of creating a sampler there. Um, I'm gonna. I'm still writing up your homework, but um, your homework will be kind of centered on uh, some of this these ideas presented here as far as um, document clustering goes. And and right now we just kind of started off with the basics of this bag of words model, and then we'll uh, we'll get into kind of the Gib sampler portion of it uh, on Monday, and then on Monday I'll also um, hopefully have a clear idea of what the uh, the final exam looks like and what you guys can expect there. Okay, let me give you your last, um, I need to give you two quiz answers, right? Okay, last two quiz answers are C and B, um, cat and bear, cat and bear for the, uh, the last two quiz answers for today, C and B. Uh, and that's it. Um, we'll end here for today. We'll see you guys uh, on Monday. So have a good weekend and um, I'll see you then.